In this example, we have some angle theta, and theta is going to be in the first quadrant, and we know that the tangent of this angle theta is going to be 5 over 12. Based on this information, we'd like to find a couple of values. So if you'd like to try to find those values first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work these together. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and draw a nice little reference triangle. It'll be a right triangle. And we'll have our angle theta down here is one of these acute angles. And so we know that tangent of this angle theta is 5 over 12. And of course, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'll put the 5 there and the 12 right there. So perhaps you notice right away this is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. But even if you don't, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to get that hypotenuse length. So 5 squared is 25, and 12 squared is 144. When I add those together, I get 169, which is the square of 13. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the sine of 2 theta. So I'll go ahead and write that down here. And we actually have a really nice identity here. It'll be a double angle identity for sine. And it's going to be 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. So I can now just get values for sine of theta and cosine of theta, plug them in, and I'll know what the sine is of twice theta. So in our case, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's our theta. So opposite over hypotenuse. So we'll have 5 over 13 for that first value. And cosine uh, is a ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse will be 12 over 13. So really, I just need to multiply these together. So 2 times 5 is 10, times 12 is 120, and we already said 13 times 13 was 169. So right here then will be the ratio that you get for the sine of twice theta, as long as the theta you're dealing with has a tangent of 5 over 12. And we did that just by using this double angle identity for sine. Okay, let's go ahead and shuffle over and find uh, the double angle here for secant. Well, secant, remember, really is a reciprocal function for cosine. So it's 1 over cosine of 2 theta. And of course, we have a nice uh, double angle identity for cosine as well. And that's going to be cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. The only thing about this is we have to be careful because this is in the denominator because we're dealing with a reciprocal function, so 1 over. So 1 over and cosine squared theta. So our cosine, again, was adjacent over hypotenuse. So it will be 12 thirteenths squared minus, and we have sine of theta, so sine again was opposite over hypotenuse. So 5 over 13 squared. So when I do this, I'll have 1 over, and 12 13 squared will be, well, 144 over 169, squaring that fraction. And 5 13 squared will be 25 over 169. So what I have is 1 over, and 144 minus 25 should be 119, so 119 over that common denominator of 169. Well, we have 1 over this fraction, but 1 over something really is just the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and take the reciprocal of this denominator, and I'll have 169 over 119. And this ratio is going to be the value for secant of twice theta. Given, once again, this information that the tangent of my angle is 5 twelfths, it's in the first quadrant, I was able to build this nice reference triangle. And in fact, I found uh, the sine of 2 theta and now the secant of 2 theta. And here are those two values, 120 over 169 and 169 over 119, respectively.